Have you ever found yourself interested in trading a stock just about to release its quarterly earnings report, but you just can't decide whether to be bullish or bearish on that stock? I'm Seth Freudberg, the head trader of SMB Capital's options trading desk here in Manhattan, and the traders on our proprietary trading desk are faced with that situation all the time and have the training to implement trades that can profit from exactly those kinds of situations. In today's video, we're going to cover an easy trade to make right before a stock is about to release its earning report. So if that's something you're looking for, then stick around because I think you're going to find this easy to add to your playbook. Hi, I'm Seth Freudberg, and I'm the head trader of SMB Capital's Options Trading Desk. SMB Capital is a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan, and we provide capital for options and equity traders from all over the world, trading both remotely and in our offices here in New York City. Now, I'd like to suggest that you click on our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free trading videos that we produce for traders and investors all over the world. They're really very valuable. Okay, so one of the highlights of earnings season is always Apple's earnings report, which took place last week with an announcement after the market closed on April 28th. And as you can see, Apple stock had rallied strongly the day leading up to the earnings release, closing up $7.07. .07. And so there did seem to be some market optimism about Apple's earnings release. But at the same time, this is in the context of a market that's been decidedly bearish all year, with the S&P 500 index off more than 13% since the beginning of the year. And so it would make a lot of sense to be a little ambivalent leading up to Apple's earnings report, which was released last week. And so when a trader is unclear about a stock's direction leading into earnings, there's a solution in the form of an option strategy that actually makes money when a stock doesn't move much based on earnings. Now, before we get into exactly how that option strategy works, I wanted to let you know that if you would like to learn three more option strategies that our pro traders use, including the unique options trick that allows you to make money while you wait to buy stocks or ETFs at the price you want, and the options income strategy that allows you to make consistent money whether the market goes up, down, or sideways, and how to make money on a stock or index trade, even if you're outright wrong on the direction, then Click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen. That will open the free workshop registration page in a new window. So don't worry, you won't lose this video or you can register directly for free at optionsclass.com. Believe me, you don't want to miss this. So pause the video, sign up now and then resume watching. Okay, so now in order to teach you how this option strategy works, we need to do a really quick review of how options on stocks work so that everyone watching this video understands how they can be used to trade a stock's earnings. And if you already know how they work, just please hang in there. This is going to be quick. Okay, so what's known as a call option on a stock entitles the buyer of that option to purchase 100 shares of that stock at a certain price called the strike price of that option, regardless of what the price of the stock is actually trading at at any time before that option expires. What's called a put option, on the other hand, entitles the buyer of that put to sell 100 shares of a stock he owns at the strike price of that put, again, regardless of what price the stock is trading at any time before that option expires. The buyer of the option pays what's called a premium to the seller of the option because the seller of the option is taking the risk that the stock will go past the strike price of the option, in which case the buyer can exercise his option. So in the case of a call, even if the stock has gone way above the strike price of that call, the call buyer can exercise his right to buy 100 shares at that strike price. In other words, he's entitled to buy the shares way below market, which makes the call very valuable in that situation. Or conversely, as, as to the put option, even if the market goes way below the strike price of the put option, the buyer of that put option has the right to sell his shares of that stock at the strike price of the put option that he's bought, even if the stock price has gone way below the strike price of the put, which again makes that option very valuable in that case. On the other hand, if on expiration day, the stock closes below the strike price of a call, unless it was previously exercised, the call expires worthless and the call seller just pockets the premium. Similarly, if you've sold a put and the market closes above the strike price of that put, then unless the put was previously exercised, 
it expires worthless and the put seller just pockets the premium. Keeping that in mind, let's take a look at Apple stock around noon of the day that the earnings will be released after the market closes on Thursday, April 28th. And so Apple was trading around 160 at that point. And so suppose that we pulled up the options chain expiring in the next day, the April 29th options chain, and then went ahead and picked the closest calls and puts to Apple's price. In other words, the 160 strike price calls and puts. And we sold 10 of those on both the put and call side and then went ahead and bought 10 points farther from the market in each case the 170 calls and the 150 puts respectively. Well, that particular formation, the at the money calls and puts, flanked by a long call and a long put equidistant from the short calls and puts, that entire formation is known as an iron butterfly to options traders and is a commonly traded strategy right before earnings, as you'll see in a minute. Now, before we look at how this plays out, Let's focus on the cash flow of this trade. And as you can see, when we sold the 160 calls, we received $4.50 for them. But remember, each options contract represents 100 shares of stock. So you multiply that by 100, and we sold 10 of them. So when you multiply it all together, you get total positive cash flow of $4,500 just from the 160 calls. But then remember, we bought the protection of 10 of those 170 calls, so we pay 750 for those, as you can see from the calculation. Then we move down to the puts and we sell 10 of the 160 at the money puts, bringing in 3680, and we turn around and pay $1,000 for the protective 150 puts for, once you net everything out, a net total positive cash flow of $6,000. $480 and your broker will require at least 3520 of capital in your account for this trade, which is the worst case scenario outcome. Okay, so after hours that day, Apple came out with its earnings release. And so the next day at 1.15 in the afternoon, a little over 24 hours after the trade was first put on, you can see that Apple was trading at 160.05, which is essentially the same price 24 hours later, which is pretty surprising for a stock that has just released its earning report, or earnings report where anything could have happened and the market could have responded violently, but instead the market took the earnings report very mildly. Now, let's focus more granularly on the pricing of the options that next day. And as you can see, the 160 calls had dropped down to $1.90, even though the stock is trading at pretty much the exact same price as it was the day before when those same calls were selling for 450. And likewise, the 170 protective calls, which we had to pay 75 cents for, had dropped to just one cent. Meanwhile, the 10 160 puts that we sold, we remember we originally sold those for 368, but now they've dropped down to just 79 cents while the protective 150 puts dropped down to, again, just one cent in value. So what is going on here? Apple's price has not moved, yet the options prices have dropped dramatically. Why that has happened is the key takeaway from today's video. You see, there are two forces at play here which have caused this dramatic reduction in value of the options, and they're both about equally powerful. The first one is what options traders call the vol crush, which refers to the reduction in price which options go through right after an earnings report is released. Why do the prices reduce after earnings are released? Well, think about it. If you're selling options on a stock like Apple, which can potentially have a very substantial reaction to an earnings release, then you're gonna to have to build very high prices into those options. Why? Well, suppose that the market loved Apple's earnings. Well, that could cause the stock's price to spike, and so those 160 calls would all of a sudden become very valuable because the stock has rallied substantially, but you, can, you, as the buyer of those calls, can still buy them for the same price as they were before that good earnings news was released when it was trading at 160. Well, knowing there's a chance of a huge positive reaction to Apple's earnings release, the market's going to bid up the price of those 160 calls, which is why they cost 450 the day before the earnings were about to be released. But once the news was out and the market really hardly reacted at all to the earnings release, then those calls now don't have to be priced for a big event in the future and instead can be priced a lot more normally because the news is in the past. And that process of the market initially pumping up an options price in anticipation of big news and the market then 
deflating that price when that news is over. That process is known as the vol crush. And incidentally, you can see from this table that the vol crush took place in both the calls and the puts. And the puts are affected for the same basic reason, because now any potential bad news coming from the earnings release is no longer in the future. And that's because the earnings report was released and the market basically yawned. And so that potential spike downward is no longer there either. And so the puts trim down their price substantially. Now, the other factor that causes the options to shrink in value is what is known as time decay. And that's a reference to the fact that as options get closer and closer to expiring, the amount of price movement risk built into the options is diminishing more and more quickly because the market is simply running out of time to move hard in one direction or another. And so therefore, the prices of those options are shrinking fast because if you think of the call options as providing the opportunity to take advantage of a stock rallying and the put options as providing the opportunity to take advantage of a stock selling off, then both opportunities are diminishing when time is running out and the price of the stock is unlikely to move massively over the next several hours until the options expire. And so here we are at 115 on the day the options expire. And so what are the chances of the stock getting to either 170 or 150? And the answer is really slight. And so those options basically have gone to zero. While the 160s are losing value because while one of them will have value as they expire unless Apple flukishly expires exactly at 160, the chance of either one of them having a lot of value is very slight because there's only two and three quarters more hours of trading left before they expire. And so how much can they really move in that short of a period of time? And so that sand running out of the hourglass effect, so to speak, that time decay is the second powerful force at play on this day. Okay, so now at this point, let's say we decide to close the trade in the midst of this ball crush. What happens exactly to the profitability of our trade? Well, let's break it down. Remember, we collected originally that $6,430, but to close the trade, we're going to have to go through a procedure where we buy back our short calls and short puts and sell off our long puts and calls. And so as you can see, we had to pay 82 cents to close the short calls, which although greatly reduced in price from what we received originally, uh, they still cost us $820 to buy back. And as you can see from the calculation, then we get back just $10 for selling off those long calls up at 170 because those basically have no value at this point. And similarly, we pay 790 to close the 160 puts and we get back basically nothing for the 150 puts, just $10 again. And so when you net it all down, you end up with net positive cash flow of $4,840 after closing all the options positions, which result in a final profit of over 135% in relation to the risk of the trade in just about 24 hours. And so what I'd like you to take away from today's video is that options, particularly options expiring in two days, have a unique property that they add to earnings trades because they're able to take advantage of two very powerful factors. The volatility crush that naturally takes place after the risk of earnings is in the rearview mirror, combined with the power of time decay that takes place very intensely on the final day of an option's life as it's pulling into expiration. It has very little price change of the underlying stock built into its price. And so therefore, if you combine these two factors into a single trade and the market acts very mildly in relation to a stock's earnings report, you can make a killing like we did in this example. Now, you may be wondering, okay, well, what would have happened if the market did respond dramatically to an earnings release? How would the trade have ended up in that case? Well, I'm gonna keep you in suspense because that's exactly what we're gonna be covering in next week's video, how to handle an earnings butterfly when the stock makes a radical move after earnings. We'll teach you the technique for handling that, so make sure to tune into our video next week. Now, just to remind you, if you're serious about your trading, you need to check out the free intensive options class that we're currently running, where you'll learn three real world option strategies that our professional options traders use all the time. Just click the link that should be appearing now at the top right corner of your screen, or you can just head on over to optionsclass.com to register for this free workshop directly. 
it's really a rare opportunity for retail traders and investors to learn directly from Wall Street traders, but that's exactly what you'll be getting through this free online workshop. So click the link to sign up now before you miss it. And please don't forget to hit our subscribe button right now so that you don't miss any of our free training videos to help you to up your game as an options trader.